Hello and welcome to this episode of Felonious, a podcast where we discuss the realm of true crime. From chilling cold cases to the wild and wacky, we'll explore it all with a perfect blend of seriousness and humour. My name is Emma and I'm Nazia. To keep up to date with what's coming up, be sure to follow us on Instagram at felonious.pod and visit our website feloniouspod.com. We hope you enjoy this episode, so let's get to it. I like your little Christmas jumper, uh, by yeah, the way. thank you. It's very festive. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's Christmas. I know, I didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get find my Christmas jumpers. Well, I can't wear them at the moment because I'm preggers, aren't I? So I can't fit into anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the first time you've announced on the podcast that you're preggers. I know, even though when this comes out, I'm going to be like much further along. No, you're not. This comes out next week. Oh, fuck. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. You can edit that bit out. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you'll be a week further along. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Oh my god. I can't think straight. So bear with me guys. Any any future episodes are you gonna get my pregnancy fog brain? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna be fun, guys. Oh no, but yeah, I can't fit into any of my old Christmas clothes at the moment. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna wear this Christmas. You could wear a a white sheet and pretend you're a snowman. <laughs> because last time when I was pregnant it was I was I wasn't that far along so I could have gotten away I I, you know wore a jumper and then I just wore a maternity skirt only because I wanted to have space for all the food whereas this time the baby's already taking a lot of space so yeah and there's going to be a lot of food (laughs) do you think it's going to be a bigger baby then or don't know, because with the second pregnancy, I've read that you the bump shows a lot earlier, a lot sooner. Okay. So I'm like, I've started wearing maternity clothes a lot sooner than I did with the first pregnancy. And also because I hadn't quite gotten down to my pre-first pregnancy size. I don't think I ever will, to be honest. So I was already at, at carrying a little bit of extra... I don't want to say weight, but I'm just a bit thicker (laughs) than I used to be. (laughs) So, um, yeah, and I'm further along because when I was pregnant last time at Christmas, I think I was still in the first trimester, whereas I'm already in the second trimester. Wow, that goes so quickly. It does. Yeah, it's... it's, um, not long till I'm already halfway through the pregnancy. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's a scary thought. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good times, though. Good times. Yeah. Eating for two. <laughs> That's the excuse, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, oh right. What have you got for us today? So my finds for this week are Christmas-based because this is our Christmas episode. Merry Christmas, folks. And the first find is a Fox News one, so I'm not sure how true this is. Or how exaggerated. Yeah. The headline is, Mother has 12-year-old son arrested for opening Christmas gifts early. (laughs) He right. <laughs> he got an unexpected stocking stuffer, a pair of handcuffs, after he snuck into his Christmas gifts a few weeks early. The mother discovered her son unwrapping a Nintendo Game Boy Advance that was meant for him as a present from his grandmother. She called the police and had the boy arrested for petty larceny, according to a police report filed. <laughs> That's a bit extreme. Uh, 63-year-old great-grandmother said he took it without permission. He wanted it. He just took it. That's so American. <laughs> but that is a bit extreme. I mean, 
come on, he's a child. Children get excited. I don't, I don't know what to say to that. I just think, what a waste of police resources. It is, yeah. But I actually did this when I was young. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I was about eight Shame or nine, I think. Maybe maybe younger than that. I can't remember. But um, I, was in, I was having an argument with my mum for some reason. I can't remember why. And um, I threatened her that um, <laughs> if something didn't happen, I'd go and open all of my Christmas presents. And she was like, oh, yeah, all right. Go ahead. Not believing me. <laughs> Emma, you little brat. I know. And then I went straight <laughs> upstairs. I knew where the Christmas presents were. I opened, yeah. opened the cupboard and just started opening them all. My goodness. And I got some really, really good presents. Did you feel like shit afterwards? <laughs> no. Well, a little bit because I went downstairs and showed my mum what I had gotten from my grandparents. And she was like, oh, you little shit. So she, <laughs> <laughs> she sent me to bed early. And she said, you're not getting anything else for Christmas. That's all you're getting. I would have just revoked those presents. I was like, you're not getting those for another year. She probably, <laughs> she probably did say that as well, actually. I'd be fuming if I was your mother. Yeah. Yeah, my dad wasn't wow. very happy when he came home either. I bet. <laughs> <sighs> That's so funny. I do remember seeing um, a TikTok video, something come up on my newsfeed where this mum was crying because um, they'd put the presents under the tree and like decorated the house and everything the night before when the kids had gone, had gone to bed. And one of the kids was so excited. They woke up earlier than everyone else in the family and went downstairs and opened all the presents. Oh like my every gosh. single present, not just theirs. But the whole family's and like the parents came downstairs and the mum was like crying. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't laugh because I'd be fuming if that happened. <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, kids, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to deal with a child that age yet. <laughs> I, I've, I've yet to experience that. But um, I think what I would do is I would, I wouldn't put the presents out the night before and also because I've got cats, so they'd ruin them. But I would probably wake up really early and put them out then, just before the kids wake up. Yeah, I think that's what I would do. I think I would also pretend that they didn't get anything, just to mess with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so cruel. <laughs> it's funny, though. <laughs> the next find oh, this oh, yes. one sounds interesting yes so four in court over blenheim palace gold toilet theft this was the other week uh in november four men have appeared in court charged over the theft of an 18 carat gold toilet from blenheim palace the lavatory was is it blenheim or blenheim 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 didn't we go there? Did we? No, we went to Leeds Castle. Yeah, our, we'd been to a castle, but I have, I've been to this place as well. Oh, maybe you used the uh, 4.8 million lavatory that was there. <laughs> so people actually stole it? Yeah, uh, there were two people that were charged with burglary. Right. And they're all due to appear in court on the 4th of January next year. A happy new year, guys. Yeah. Hope it was worth it. Uh, this toilet I'm in, that is so tacky. There's a picture, well, actually a video on the BBC News website. It's so tacky. It's like, you know those, you know those gold wrapped up chocolates you get at Christmas? <laughs> it looks a bit, yeah. it, it looks like something like that. I mean, you'd have to be quite vain to think that your ass is only worth sitting on gold. <laughs> the loo could be used for its intended purpose with a three-minute time limit to avoid queues. What? <laughs> you could only spend three minutes on the golden loo. So basically, only a quick pee. Yeah, no number twos. No. 
No, no golden nuggets. <laughs> yeah. What a ridiculous thing. Oh. And what a ridiculous idea to steal it as well. What are they going to do with a gold toilet? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Someone will probably buy it. Like yeah, Richard maybe. Branson or someone like that. <laughs> don't want to have the image of Richard, Richard Branson sitting on the it's toilet. It's more Elon Musk's Please. kind of... No, I think he'd have... He'd probably have like a Tesla toilet. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to think about these men on toilets, to be fair. <laughs> it's not an image I want. Right now. <laughs> Are you not going to be sitting on any golden toilets this Christmas then? Thankfully not. <laughs> <laughs> what are your plans for this Christmas? I'm going to go to my in-laws and obviously open all the presents. The night before or? No, the morning, the day. They did invite us to go the night before, but we can't get cat sitters. I was making a joke to the... Oh, okay. Sorry. I was nod- nodding <laughs> to the kid that. <laughs> oh no, no, no. They're really good. I think they put the presents out in the morning because they've got cats as well. Oh, okay. And they have extended family coming over, so there's a lot of presents. It's a bit overwhelming, to be fair. But yeah, we're gonna go open the presents, and then we're gonna spend the day eating vegan raclette with vegan ham and chorizo i won't be having any alcohol this year which is a bit sad not not that i drink a lot i just have like a glass but yeah it's nice having that glass um i think i've got a bottle of non-alcoholic wine so that's yeah okay. just down that it's fine yeah <laughs> i'll be the only one <laughs> drinking it um and then yeah we'll just play board games and eat food that sounds fun yeah it's a nice day yeah and all the attention's going to be on on my kid because she's the youngest and everyone just wants to play with her. So. Yeah. Oh, my God. She's going to have a fab time. Yeah, she is. And she's older now, so yeah. she's more like she understands a bit more about what Christmas is. So she's running about now, right? She's walking and talking? Yeah, she's talking. She knows what Peppa Pig is. Um, she's at that point in life that she knows... Peppa Pig. Wow, that's a milestone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She knows who Mickey Mouse is. Um, uh oh. So she's gonna, if she gets any presents to do with Mickey Mouse or Peppa Pig, she's she's gonna have a great Christmas. Oh, uh, she's gonna be disappointed by my gifts. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. She'll be happy. She's quite easy to please, to be fair. Anything to do with animals, Peppa Pig, and Mickey Mouse, she's happy with. Aww. And food. She loves food. Takes after, Who doesn't? after her parents. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you get some kids her age that are fussy eaters already, but she's not at that stage yet. My boyfriend was like that, apparently. He wouldn't eat any vegetables. Oh, really? Yeah. And he didn't grow out of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. It's, so, it's only been in the last 15 years that he's actually been eating a bunch of vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> oh. Basically, since you got together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So what you got planned for Christmas? Uh, Christmas is pretty easy for us now that we've got Luna. Like we 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 yeah. can't really. Luna is our dog. If for people that don't know, um, we can't really travel anywhere, uh, to see family because they live in the UK or they live four hours away. So yeah, or eight hours by car actually. Sorry, but um, yeah. So we're just staying home. We open presents on the twenty fifth. Whereas people open presents here on the 24th in Sweden? Yeah, I think some European countries um, celebrate on the 24th. Yeah. So, um, yeah, all the stockings are filled and presents are wrapped. So we do that in the morning. And then um, we have a massive lunch at about four o'clock. And then we fall asleep after that. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, I've got to take Luna for a walk, obviously, during the day. Yeah, 
That's all right. And it's nice to do a Christmas walk. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. You've got a little poem. <laughs> yeah. Or is it a song? Uh, <laughs> Are you going to sing for no, us? No, I'm not singing. <laughs> I'm not going to. My voice is too valuable. It's a little uh, Christmas jingle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks to Cliff Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to murder your song, Cliff. <laughs> Don't sue us. <laughs> the hood is bling, the burglars sing. The bold act fast as the sirens are ringing. Dreams of Santa, dreams of dough. Fingers red and noses they grow from all the lies. Oh, it's Christmas time, mistletoe and crime. Thrilling bank heists to pass the time. With blue lights in a choir and thieves stealing trees. Time to rejoice in the bad that we see. A time for drinking, a time for deceiving, a time for creeping and for thieving. Joy and laughter spoiled everywhere as we follow these cases right here. Oh, it's Christmas time, mistletoe and crime. Thrilling art heists to pass the time. With blue lights in a choir and dad stealing snakes. Time to rejoice in the bad that we see. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> that was very good. Oh, thanks. You're too kind. I guess uh, people can under can, can get a gist of what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, that was our introduction <laughs> to today's episode. Yeah. <laughs> So, disclaimer, we're going to be talking about various forms of Christmas theft. Obviously, some of those people are going to be dressed up as Santa. Uh, There's mentions of gun, violence and death. What would Christmas be without guns, violence and death, eh? Yeah, throw drugs in there. It's like EastEnders, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Basically is. <laughs> yeah. And uh, drugs. Yeah. Bit of drugs. Bit of drugs. So, yeah, we've got some wild stories, especially the last one. Yeah, it is pretty wild. <laughs> That's a crazy one. <laughs> yeah, but please don't let your children listen to this because there, there's going to be some swearing as well, probably. And um, yeah. Yeah, even though it's a festive episode, it's not suitable for young little minds. No, it's, um, is it Watershed? Yeah, do they still have those? No idea. <laughs> Don't know. Uh, shall I start then? Yeah, go cool. <laughs> Let's kick this off. <laughs> so uh, we'll start today's episode. We'll talk about Christmas tree thefts. Um, now I didn't know I didn't realize how big this actually was before I started researching into Christmas crime. Basically, <laughs> I didn't know this yeah. was such a thing. But um, in 2013, it was reported that one in five Christmas trees, that 600,000 spruces, were stolen each year in Sweden. A typical Christmas tree can cost between 200 to 400 kroner, so around 30 euros. And in 2011, two thieves were caught in Uppsala by police after they had followed tracks in the snow left by the thieves, dragging their loot from the crime scene. They stole the trees from a tree seller store, so were charged with theft and shoplifting. Bit of a rookie mistake, that, isn't it? Yeah. Dragging the tree they sh- through the They snow. should have used a branch to cover up their tracks. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, landowners are also being impacted by this crime with uh, people taking trees without asking but landowners are pouring a mixture of urine and water on their trees to ward off thieves because once the tree is brought inside it smells really bad why dilute it with water Uh, i guess because they need to spray spray it on the tree and it's easier to spray stuff if you've got not if you have a penis uh, yeah, I see what you mean, but I'm not sure if they're using <laughs> human urine or animal urine. Oh, I see. Right, yeah, got you. <laughs> but thanks for the biology lesson. 
Okay, I, I see your point. I mean, even even if they have a dog, dog's just gonna pee by a tree. Yeah, but I'm guessing it's some sort of animal urine because they they're stronger in ammonia. I think because their scent glands are near the. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Nice. Yeah. The Guatemalan fir tree is now considered as an endangered species due to the exploitation of its timber, but also because of Christmas. Known as the Chanel No. 5 of trees, the Guatemalan fir is a victim of tree thieves because of its perfumey scent. Other trees used at Christmas like the Douglas fir and Fraser fir are grown by their millions for the festive season. But the Guatemalan fir is sourced from shrinking high altitude forests in Guatemala, and one study estimates that 95% of the forest area has been eliminated. Wow. Yeah, that's quite a shocking number. Nothing like a bit of capitalism ruining a corner of the earth, eh? Yeah, deforestation. Yep. The selling of these trees has been banned internationally. But domestic trade in Guatemala is still legal, however, only for trees that have been grown and harvested by certified plantations. This has caused poachers to go underground and create their own mafias, cutting down young trees and seed-bearing branches on older trees. The poachers often create false compartments in their trucks and trailers and sometimes douse them in gasoline to hide the tree's scent. In 2020, 300 Christmas trees were stolen from a family-run business in London. This was at a time the company was reopening after lockdown during the COVID pandemic. A gang of thieves were spotted by onlookers as they used a van to steal the trees, making several visits. The value of the stolen trees was £3,000. What a load of scumbags. Yeah, that's quite a lot of money, especially if you've only just reopened... Yeah, and it's a family business. Yeah, You've had a long time out of business. Yeah. And trying to recoup their losses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In Germany in 2019, over 1,000 euros of trees were stolen from an empty department store. The 80 trees were for a variety of local businesses and the identities of the thieves are unknown. What are they going to... I mean, where are they storing all these trees that they've stolen? Yeah, and, like, is there, like, a black market for trees or something? must be, yeah. It just makes... Some of these thefts, it makes you wonder how... What are they going to... Is it worth all the trouble? Yeah. (laughs) You know? Uh, Yeah. You got... uh, The amount of money that they would make off of those trees. Yeah. Like, they... And they've got a buy petrol and like hire a van probably yeah and as you said have somewhere to store it yeah exactly it's crazy right now we're going to talk about decoration theft which happens apparently who knew yeah so a very recent case in november of this year 2023 a nursing home in canada was a victim of decoration theft as thieves stole the copper wiring from the Christmas lights display on the 100 trees that lined the home's driveway. The trees are sponsored by local businesses and individuals with the money going to the home to help fund for furniture and the outdoor garden for its residents. Copper is one of the most valuable scrap metals and is currently worth around $10 per kilo in Canada. Again, scumbags. Yeah, that's horrible. Like oh. these people don't have much like to look forward to at Christmas. They probably don't have families visiting them. Like some of them won't. Yeah. And so Christmas time sounds like the only period to like cheer them up. Yeah, and also for the staff that have to work on Christmas Day. Yeah. Like yeah. Idiots. Anyway. In America, a pair of thieves were caught on CCTV stealing decorations from a storage facility. The decorations belonged to a family who said that some were of sentimental value and family heirlooms. The family posted the CCTV footage on social media and the police were able to identify the thieves. The police recovered the stolen decorations inside the thieves' homes and 
returned them to the family. It was a Christmas miracle. Finally, some good news. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if they couldn't return those things? Like, some of them are yeah. priceless, aren't they? If you Yeah, and if you've got, like, vintage baubles or decorations, like, some of those things are really nice and yeah, they have a bit of, ha- like, history, so... Would your insurance be... Yeah, that would be a, a covered under insurance, wouldn't it? No idea. I'd hope so. Mm. Gift thieves. Doesn't end. <laughs> so, oh, this one's hilarious. In 2022, well, it's not hilarious. It could be sad, give it if, if, depending on the woman's circumstances. In 2022, a woman broke into the actor Robert De Niro's home and was caught stealing presents from under the tree. She had used a knife and crowbar to break in. The actor heard commotion in his apartment and caught the woman stuffing presents into a bag. She was known to the police for other burglary offences. During court proceedings, De Niro said that it was a sad situation and that he felt bad for the burglar. I wonder what sort of presents he'd have under his tree. Yeah. How does she know where he lives? (sighs) Yes, I mean, have you heard of the bling ring? There were a bunch of teenagers in, uh, I guess, Hollywood, and they they um, stole valuables from a bunch of celebrity homes, including Paris Hilton. Oh, uh, is there? There's something on Netflix about this. I think. I think there was a documentary, and there was also a movie with Emma Watson. Ah, uh, okay. Acting in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, maybe. It's not that hard to find a celebrity home. Maybe. I guess if you live in LA then, like most actors live in LA, don't they? Yeah, yeah. In 2012, a French man reported... Oh my God, this one's hilarious. In 2012, (laughs) a French man reported the loss of his mobile phone to the police. He was a burglar who stole presents from an unattended, unlocked car. While stealing the gifts, he accidentally left his phone on the car's dashboard. As he was reporting the loss of his phone, the couple he had burgled were at the same police station reporting the theft. They passed the phone to the police and the burglar was arrested on the spot. All the Christmas presents were recovered and the thief spent Christmas in jail. (laughs) That's just something that happens in some sort of sitcom. Yeah, it reminds me there's... um... There was a guy who I can't remember. He was a he was a burglar, and I can't remember where he was or what he took. But he had used blue tack to um, as a mold for a lock, so right. he could make a key out of it. Um, but right. he left the blue tack there, and his thumbprint was in the blue tack, <laughs> so the police could lift the the print of the blue tack. Oh my god! What a bell end. <laughs> um. <laughs> Now, we know there are some presents that are really popular at Christmas, like Lego sets. And police have warned shop owners in Northern Ireland to increase their Lego security due to a rise in Lego theft. Culprits are selling the Lego online at inflated prices as there is such a big demand for them. That doesn't surprise me because Lego, the things they, you can buy with like Lego sets these days... You can buy like flower arrangements, Lego flower arrangements. They cost like 50 euros or 40 euros. Yeah, you can buy Lego everything. Yeah, um, and I guess like people collect them and yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, and they do advent calendars as well. Yeah. Which are really expensive. And they do like Lego, so they'll have a famous painting and they'll do a Lego version of it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, they did a Mona Lisa, didn't they? Yeah, they did. I can't remember. There's a Japanese artist and he's got a very famous painting. It's called The Wave or something. And they've got a massive like Lego one of that and it's like 100 euros. Wow. It's crazy. So one father in America decided that Lego wasn't good enough for his child and so decided to steal a handful of snakes from a pet shop along with $600 in cash. The snakes were found by the police and returned to the pet shop and the thief was charged with simple burglary. What the actual fuck? (laughs) (laughs) I'm pretty sure your child would be much happier with the Lego. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> you could have got Lego snakes. Yeah, or just those, you know, those robotic snakes, like those toys that you can control with a little controller. They do those? Yeah. Years ago, me and the boyfriend at the time, we bought one in a car boot sale, but I think it was sold, it originally been sold in like the Natural History Museum or something. But it was like a toy snake and you controlled it with a little remote control. Aww. <laughs> I want one of those. That would really freak people out. That'd be funny. I know, it freaked the cats out. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh God, people, Christmas does drive people crazy. Snakes for Christmas. Yeah. And then we move on to high crimbo. Uh, people taking drugs at the fe- in the festive season. Why not? Twas the month before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care by an intruder who was impaired. In 2011, a man broke into an American home and filled with the Christmas spirit and high on bath salts, decided to decorate the house. An 11-year-old boy found the decorating intruder on the sofa in front of the TV playing with the kids' toys. He had lit candles on the coffee table and hung a wreath on the garage door. The police arrested him and charged him with burglary. He was known to police for other drug charges, but he was involved in a church programme to help convicted felons in prison. I guess he didn't have far to travel that Christmas. I mean, that's quite a sweet one, actually. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's not the worst crime, but I imagine that boy got a right fright when he saw a stranger playing with all of his Christmas presents. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) A German hippie was arrested in 2010 when police found a two-metre tinsel-clad cannabis plant in the hippie's home. His plans were to decorate the cannabis tree further and surround it with presents, just like a normal Christmas. And in the same year, in Berlin, police arrested a man who made an advent calendar with weed behind each door instead of chocolate. It's not a bad idea, to be honest. (laughs) Just have a spliff yeah. in each little, have a different variety of weed and, yeah, have a different spliff. Weed brownies. Why not? Yeah. Make num- uh, day 25 a uh, space cake. Yeah. I wonder if they do that in the Netherlands, do uh, advent colours with weed know. in for Christmas. If we get any Dutch listeners, please let us yeah, know. Yeah, um, if, they, if they don't do it commercially... Do you do it personally? Let us know. <laughs> have you have you made, wherever you are that you smoke weed, whether it's legal or not, I mean, you don't have to, you can tell us anonymously, but have you ever made a weed advent calendar? Yeah. Or uh, We don't want to know about any other drugs. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, the, <laughs> just weed. <laughs> or if you've, if you've, no, actually I won't ask that because I'll get all sorts of things. <laughs> Yeah, let's not get ourselves or our listeners in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Snoop Dogg's made an advent calendar of weed. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Uh, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas ham theft. In the week before Christmas in 2022, a 67-year-old female judge was fined for shoplifting a Christmas ham. What makes ham Christmas? This is actually in Sweden. Okay, so what's Christmas ham? Chris- <laughs> it's a big joint of ham they have at Christmas time. It's, it's, it's like the roast turkey for... Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just it's, needed to... It's just like fun. a <laughs> traditional thing. Right. And other festive items. The judge had to retire from her post after it was found out she was being investigated and she was fined 50,000 crowns, which is a... Wow, that's a hefty fine. Which is about four thousand eight hundred euros. Yeah, I, d- I mean, I don't know if she had lost it or if she was high on something. I don't know. Christmas hams aren't that expensive, I don't think. I've never, yeah. I've never bought one, and I'm not going to. But yeah, I don't get it. And if you're a judge as well, you should be earning enough to be able to afford a Christmas ham. Yeah. Maybe she just wanted to have a bit of a thrill in her life. Maybe. I, I think she was caught with Brussels sprouts as well. I think that was on the list. <laughs> oh, God. Right. My parents uh, have grown Brussels sprouts on their allotment. Nice. And they're so weird. The way they grow is it's really like yeah. alien-like. So good, though. They're, they're horrible. I don't like them. 
Oh, I love sprouts. I hate having to prepare them because you've got to clean them and peel the rubbish skin off. It takes time, but once you've had them, I like them. I like sprouts. Mm, you can keep them. Yeah, I will, thanks. They make you fat. <laughs> yeah, they do. Stinky in your house this Christmas. <laughs> oh, right. Santa's a thief. Naughty. In two separate cases in France in 2017, Santa was caught stealing handbags, presents and alcohol. One man was caught in Bézier wearing a Father Christmas outfit and stole handbags from women. What? <laughs> stole handbags from women passing in the street? So basically just mugging them. Yeah. He didn't have any sacks. <laughs> yeah. He had yeah. to use handbags instead. Exactly. I'm just going to borrow this, love. <laughs> He was caught by police and charged with theft. Another man in Longadoc was found in the same outfit wearing a sack with stolen presents and fancy bottles of wine and champagne. The police charged him with breaking and entering. It's not clear whether either of them were able to keep their outfits. I guess it would have to be sent in for evidence, right? Oh yeah. I wonder how many Christmas like Santa outfits they have in evidence. Yeah, but then the police have like free outfits to wear in their Christmas parties. Yeah, that's true. I guess. Yeah, they've, they've got enough so that they can dress up and go into people's houses and steal their Christmas presents. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, next one is a wild case. Oh, it's a doozy. Yeah. Yuletide bank robbery. Nothing like a bank robbery at Christmas. In 1927, one of Texas's most infamous crimes occurred. Marshall Ratliff decided to dress up as Santa Claus and rob the First National Bank in the town of Cisco, along with his accomplices, Henry Helms, Robert Hill and Lewis Davis. At the time of the robbery, Ratliff was on parole from another bank robbery in Texas. The safecracker Ratliff had hired came down with the flu as they were planning the heist, which is why Lewis Davis stepped in. He was a desperate man who was after money for his family and offered a nice return for his services. Texas was on guard during this time as there was an average of four bank robberies occurring per day. So the Texas Bankers Association decided to do something about it and offered $5,000 to anyone who shot a bank robber during the crime. This, along with the fact that Ratliff's face was recognisable, raised the stakes of the robbery, which is why he decided to dress as the big red jolly man, Santa. The group stole a car and arrived near the bank on the 23rd of December. Ratliff got out of the car dressed as Santa and walked towards the bank, stopping to speak to passers-by. It was a busy street full of people doing their Christmas shopping, so it wasn't odd to see a random Santa walking down the street. Some children had followed Ratliff to an alleyway where he met his accomplices and they made their way inside the bank with the children continuing after Santa. One of the cashiers inside the bank was full of Christmas cheer so was happy to see Santa walk in and greet him but Ratliff ignored them. Ratliff walked over to where the customers wrote out their deposit slips. The cashier called out to Santa again but there was still no response. Then Ratliff's accomplice, Robert Hill, burst into the bank with a pistol and shouted, hands up. Both Henry Helms and Lewis Davis came in carrying pistols. Ratliff managed to get behind the cashier's desk where there was a gun, which he had stuffed under his red suit. Ratliff revealed a sack from beneath his costume and demanded the cashier to fill it with money and bonds. He forced one of the bank tellers to open a vault and then something unexpected happened. A customer of the bank, Mrs. Blassingame, walked into the bank with her daughter who was hoping to see Santa, who had entered the bank earlier. She immediately realised there was a robbery afoot and so charged her way past the bank robbers through the bookkeeping office while shouting, They are robbing the bank! and reached for the door to the alleyway that Santa had used to get in. She told her daughter to run and under the threat of being shot escaped herself. Mrs. Blassingame ran to City Hall and the police department alerting the chief of police and most citizens of the robbery. The chief of police grabbed his riot gun and ordered officers to cover the back door to the bank. Inside the bank, one of Ratliff's accomplices was threatening bank staff and customers while holding two guns. Ratliff had managed to fill his sack and exited the vault. 
There are conflicting sources about who fired the first shot. Some say it was Ratliff and others say it was Robert Hill, but whoever it was caused a fusillade of gunfire between the robbers inside and the police outside, along with several citizens who were legally carrying guns. Some other citizens were rushing to hardware stores to purchase guns to be able to join in. One of the fugitives was shot in the arm, a cashier received a bullet to the jaw and a customer was shot in the leg. One customer was able to escape the bank and warn the police outside about the hostages inside the bank. The robbers forced the hostages inside the bank out of the door to where their car was parked. Most of the hostages escaped but two children were used as shields so that the robbers could get inside their car. I have to say... The hardware stores must have loved it because their sales went up whenever there was a bank robbery, clearly. (laughs) Oh, it's crazy in America. Yeah. Um, When I was there, I went to Arizona about over 10 years ago, but we went inside a Walmart and there was just like racks and racks of guns. Yeah, I remember seeing that when I went to Michigan. (laughs) It's such a weird sight because we come from the UK and, you know, buying a gun isn't normal there. (laughs) No. You don't get supermarkets filled with, like, shelves of guns. Yeah, exactly. It's so weird. Chief Bedford and Deputy George Carmichael suffered fatal injuries. Chief Bedford's injuries didn't stop him from blocking the robber's escape path. Amid the exchange of gunfire, the experienced officer of the region for 25 years sustained five gunshot wounds. He died on Christmas Day from his injuries and Deputy Carmichael died on January 17th. Ratliff was shot twice, and his accomplice, Louis Davis, was severely wounded. Officer Reddys rushed to the police station to pick up his rifle, and along with a civilian, followed the robbers in their car. As they were making their escape with two hostages, the robbers realised that they had forgotten to fill the car with fuel before the heist. They also had a flat tyre which was shot by an officer. So the robbers got out of their vehicle and commandeered another car driven by a 14-year-old boy. It's 1927, okay? 14-year-olds can drive. I don't think they even had licences back then, did they? Yeah, probably not. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, that's probably true, actually. Yeah. They then took their loot, the hostages, and injured Davis under gunfire to the car they just hijacked and then realised the car's owner had taken the keys so they couldn't start the car. That's one smart kid. So they decided to move everything back, apart from Davis, to the original getaway car, which is when Robert Hill was shot. They realised later that they had left the money inside the 14-year-old's car. Oh my god, what shambles. Absolute shambles. Christmas mayhem. Yeah. Davies and the money was found by the police and they temporarily gave up the chase for Ratcliffe and his other accomplices. The money was returned to the bank, which was $12,400 in cash and $150,000 in non-negotiable securities. About 200 bullet holes were discovered inside the bank. Louis Davis, who hadn't committed a crime before this, died from his gunshot wounds. That's a bit sad. He got involved in this when he didn't have to and he died for it. Yeah. For nothing. We, I think he only got involved because he was desperate to get stuff for his kids, I think. Yeah. And it was just a really shit heist from the sounds <laughs> yeah. of it. So Ratliff and his other accomplices decided to ditch their bullet-ridden car and continue on foot. Despite search efforts from neighbouring towns, the robbers were able to get hold of another vehicle. The bandits crashed that vehicle but managed to commandeer a car driven by Carl Wiley, a young driller. They compelled him to be their hostage and drive. In the midst of this takeover, Mr Wiley's father discharged his shotgun at the escaping car, inadvertently hitting his own son. (sighs) After hiding out all night, the robbers decided to go back to Cisco to hide in plain sight. They let Wiley go and stole another vehicle. (laughs) It's just absolute madness. The robbers were suffering from their injuries, obviously, and the cold weather conditions and were ambushed the next day on their way back to Cisco. They were followed by officers and another gunfight ensued. Ratliff was hit, but Helms and Hill were able to escape in the woods nearby. Ratliff had six gunshot wounds and was concealing six pistols when he was captured. Helms and Hill were caught on December 30th, seven days after the robbery. 
Henry Helms was convicted of killing the two police officers and was sentenced to death. He died by electric chair on 6th of September 1929. Robert Hill pleaded guilty to armed robbery and received a 99-year sentence. He managed to escape prison three times, but he was recaptured each time. He got parole in the mid-1940s, got married and became a productive citizen and passed away in 1996. I wonder if he had any kids and grandkids, because what a story to tell. Yeah. I wonder if he dressed up as Santa. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. That's crazy. Like, a 99 year sentence and he was able to get parole and lead a relatively normal life. After, Yeah, he had a bit of a chance at having some life outside of prison. Yeah. And he would have seen a lot. He would have experienced a lot of changes. Yeah. That's like 15 years in jail. Yeah. So Marshall Ratliff was convicted with armed robbery in 1928 and got a life sentence of 99 years. A few months later, he was sentenced to death for his role in the death of police officers Carmichael and Bedford. He appealed the sentence, but when that failed, he started to act oddly in the hopes that he would get an insanity plea. His mother filed for a lunacy hearing. Upon hearing this news, the civilians impacted by the robbery were angry that the execution of Ratliff hadn't taken place. While awaiting execution, Ratliff feigned paralysis and his jailers, who were convinced by this, had to feed him and bathe him. Ratliff managed to get hold of a gun and fatally wounded one of the officers. He then got into a hand-to-hand combat with the other officer, all the while the commotion was being watched by civilians outside who couldn't break open the steel door to help the officer. Sorry, this is just hilarious. It's not, but it's hilarious. Um, (laughs) The officers managed to pin Ratliff down, beat him unconscious and returned him to his cell. A crowd of nearly 2,000 gathered outside of the jail. The officer who Ratliff tried to subdue was overpowered by 20 men who stormed the jail and dragged Ratliff out. They tied his hands and ankles and took him to a theatre nearby where the play The Noose was being performed. They threw a rope around a guy wire between two telephone poles and tried to hang Ratliff. The knot on the noose became loose, no time for rhymes, and Ratliff fell to the ground. The second attempt was successful as they used a stronger rope. He was pulled 15 feet up in the air and pronounced dead 20 minutes later. No one was ever tried for the lynching. The National Bank still exists, albeit in another building, and it apparently has a painting, newspaper clippings, and a medallion on the bank to commemorate the robbery. Yeah. I mean, I know... Wow! Yeah. <laughs> I know he was, like, a bad man and he robbed a bank and posed as Santa, but he didn't deserve that kind of ending. Yeah. Especially when he did such a shit job of the robbery in the, <laughs> and getaway. Yeah. Wow. Well, that was a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> That's one Christmas you won't forget. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> oh. I think you're doing the next one as well. Oh, yeah, sorry. Am I sorry? <laughs> <laughs> and cue nausea. Sorry. <laughs> God, you can tell I'm getting tired. <laughs> so, moving on. Did you know there is an annual event in the US called SantaCon? I didn't until I found out about this. Doesn't surprise me. Does not surprise me. They'll have a con for everything. Well, in 2014, One Father Christmas entered the Wells Fargo Bank in San Francisco and handed a bank teller a demand note. He received what he wanted and went back out into the crowds of his fellow jolly doppelgangers. The FBI were on the hunt for his merry ass, but they didn't get their Christmas miracle in catching the guy, as far as we know. <laughs> Oh. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna rob a bank during Christmas, you might as well do it when there's loads of other Santa Claus and you know no one can tell you apart. Yeah, yeah, just don't go as the Grinch. Yeah, although the Grinch is quite popular now, so maybe there's going to be is. quite a few Grinches. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's a Grinch con. Yeah, is there a con con for convicts? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. <gasps> Oh, here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus, spiking all the champagne. In 2011 in Berlin, Germany, shoppers at a Christmas market became ill after drinking free mulled wine. Some had nausea, were sick, and some lost consciousness. 
and had to be taken to hospital. The drinks had been spiked with the date rape drug GHB and ecstasy. The culprit was dressed as St Nick and was never found. It wasn't Charles Sabraj, was it? Yeah, it probably was. <laughs> he he probably made his uh, beard from his head hair. Yeah, I don't want to know. Uh, I don't want to know. Don't want to know. No. <laughs> what is it with people like mass drugging people? I don't understand this. What do they get out of it? It's like, did you hear about recently? Um, I think it was in the UK. This guy was going around just stabbing people with a syringe. Oh, yes, I did hear about this. Like, what the fuck? Didn't it have something in... Was it just like he was stabbing them or was he injecting? There was something in there. I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know if it was his blood or some sort of bodily fluid. Because I I sometimes watch 24 hours in A&E and um, they had a... I think it was a New Year's special on... But loads of like students were coming in with like these tiny prick wounds yeah. that were caused by syringes and people were like injecting them with, I don't know if it was GHB or if it was something, it was something like that. And um, they couldn't, they lost memory, uh, they couldn't uh, remember getting home and stuff like that. So it's pretty scary. Yeah, absolute wrong ones out there. Mm. Uh, on to Christmas nativity art thieves now. 2018 marked the 50th anniversary of the theft of Caravaggio's nativity with saints Lawrence and Francis. Caravaggio himself had a chequered past as he was on the run after killing a man in Rome. He painted the missing masterpiece in 1609 in Sicily. The painting was placed in an altar wall in a small chapel and was cut from its frame. An art expert said in order to steal the three by two metre painting required studying and planning. The cut was perfect and didn't leave a trace of paint behind. It appears to be the work of a professional who could have been commissioned. There are rumours that the painting was stolen by people involved in the Sicilian Mafia and that the painting had made its way to Switzerland and then on to Eastern Europe. There were also tales of it being cut into pieces, eaten by hogs and burned. Art detective Charles Hill believes it's all bullshit and believes that the painting is still in Sicily and that the mafia used the painting as either collateral in drug deals or a bargaining chip with the authorities. The painting remains undiscovered. I thought that was quite interesting. It's going to get discovered at some point and there's going to be a documentary about it probably. Yeah, on Netflix probably. Yeah, either Netflix or, I don't know... I want to say, like, Discovery. I don't even know what Discovery yeah. is. But <laughs> or a Disney film will be made out of it. A Christmas oh, they're gonna, a Christmas They're going to make film. a film out of it. <laughs> they're going to animate it as well. They're going to... Maybe, They're going to yeah. use animals <laughs> instead of people. <laughs> like they did with uh, Robin Hood. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know that about Caravaggio, though. No, I didn't either. That's crazy. That, he might be um, worth a visit again. For the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of future episodes, what's what's coming up next? So, after this one airs, on Boxing Day, yay! Yeah. Because we're not going to have a day off on Boxing Day. Not from the podcast anyway. We've got the final part, part three of Charles Sabraj. We're going to finally wrap that one up. Yeah, what a saga. Yeah, if you've stuck with us up to this point thank you yeah to find out how it all ends listen out on the 26th of december if you're not too hungover yeah or if you are hungover it's a perfect remedy for hangovers you can <laughs> maybe i wouldn't know <laughs> i haven't been hungover in so long <laughs> me too <laughs> but if you've got a food coma we all know what those are like yeah yeah definitely uh just you know set in your headphones put your spotify or Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music on, and listen to us. We'll soothe your food coma uh, symptoms. Yes. Yeah. We're good at we're good at that. (laughs) (laughs) No, but uh, just a quick thank you for everyone who's uh, listened so far and for supporting us. Yeah, thank you so much. We really appreciate it, and we've had some really nice feedback. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, what's coming up in the future? What are our future episodes? 
So in oh in the new year, <laughs> <laughs> next year, uh, we've got. I think is it um what is after Charles the Branch? <laughs> I forgot. So, we've got the we've, Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, we've got two episodes about well two two parts to the Stockholm syndrome episode. Yeah. One about a bank robbery in Stockholm. Yeah. And the second part is about Patty Hearst. Yeah, who is based in America, but it's a crazy, crazy case. And then what else? We've got a bank heist. We've got another bank heist, the Bangladesh bank heist yeah. at some point. We've got an episode about Portugal. Yeah, we've got the serial killers of Portugal. And we've got an episode on Carlos Ghosn. The Mr. Bean Houdini of car companies. Yeah. If you don't know who Carlos Ghosn is, you'll find out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, what else do we have? We've got the fair dodging. Yep. And Felician Kabuga. Ah, yes. Yeah. We've got the Mr. Genocide, Felician Kabuga. And we've got neurology and crime. Yes. Yeah, lots to look forward to in the new year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was a short one. That was short and sweet. So have you got any New Year's resolutions? No. (laughs) (laughs) I really don't because I'm going to be pregnant. (laughs) Well, as in I'm going to be heavily pregnant and there's no point in having New Year's resolutions. Just try and get as prepared for baby number two as possible. Yeah. What about you? Um, Mine is to eat more food. Yeah, oh, that sounds like a good resolution, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, mine, um, another one is to learn to crochet. Yeah. <laughs> to hopefully understand those instructions yeah. that you were given. Yeah, I got given a kit from my parents. <laughs> it's an Audi crochet kit. It's meant to be for beginners, but it's full of instructions that I don't understand and it has no diagrams to show what I'm supposed to do. So it's like reading Morse code. It really is, because he sent me a picture and I was like, what the hell does this even mean? It's not even written in layman's terms. Yeah, I thought I was sitting the Mensa test when I was like reading. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I'm sure someone, I'm sure there's got, there's got to be a video where someone said, you know, if you don't understand how to do the Aldi crochet kit, here it is. <laughs> if you, there's got if to you be. don't understand how to do the Aldi crochet kit, give up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Find another kit. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure you'll get there, hopefully. Yeah. If I do, I'll post a picture of my pro- my progress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so please uh, follow us on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah. We hope you have a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. Yeah. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Peace out. Thank you for listening to the show. We hope you enjoyed this episode. You can find more information about the show on our website at feloniouspod.com or on our Instagram at feloniouspod. Links to our show notes can be found in the episode description as well as through our website and social media. You can visit our contact us page and tell us what you think about the show and if there are any cases you would like us to cover. We hope you join us for the next episode. Goodbye. Bye!